imagine the year is 11 after Hidra and you are in the blessed city of our prophet, Medina. Our Lady Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam has just passed away from her martyrdom. And of course, Our Lady Zainab alayhi salam, she was only a small child when her mother passed away. I want you to imagine that you are in the house of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam. And Sayyidah Zainab is asleep in her bed while Imam Ali alayhi salam is burying the blessed body of his love Fatima to Sahra in that blessed graveyard of Jannat al-Baqi. Imagine that Sayyidah Zainab has woken up from a dream and she's so distressed and crying. Where is my mother? Where is my father? And you are the only one there to comfort her. What would you do to bring her comfort and ease her pain? Um, I think, I think I would read her some Quran to calm her down. Because when I'm when I'm uh, very upset or stressed, I like to read Quran to calm myself down. Um, I think I also would. I think I also would talk to her about her mother so she could get everything out, how she feels and to not keep it all in because obviously losing your mother is very hard, it's extremely painful because your mother is like the light of the house. So I think I would just ask her, how are you feeling? Um, I think I would ask her. Um, I would. I think I would ask her to tell me stories about her and her mother, because I know that would make her happy remembering her mother. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. That's a lovely suggestion about um, reciting the Quran because the Prophet وآله, he says the Quran is like a polish for your heart and whenever you read it or listen to it, it does bring a calmness in your chest. And it's sorrowful as well when you think of how history repeats itself. Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam lost her mother Sayyidah Khadija at a very young age. And then the same thing happened with Sayyidah Zainab with her mother. I now want you to picture that you are now in the city of Khufa. That city which is the cradle of history. So many prophets and the Ahl al-Bayt have graced those streets. You are in the city of Khufa and it is the night of the 21st of Ramadan and Imam Ali, Asad Allah Al-Ghalib, Amir Al-Muhmineen, As-Siddiq Al-Aqba alayhi salam he has just been martyred. He has died from the stroke of Ibn Muljam. Imam Ali alayhi salam was like a father and mother to Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. So you can imagine how she would have felt on a night like this. What would you say to her in that moment when she's feeling so lost and hurt and alone? Um, I think I would tell her to stay patient. Um, I also think I would tell her that God gives the most challenging um, fights for the most, the bravest warriors. I think I would tell her that. Um, I think I also would not only just tell her all this and try to calm her down, I think I would take her with me, um, get flowers and we would go to the graveyard Maybe that would also calm her down, I think. Mm -hmm. 
It is true that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He loves someone, He afflicts them with hardships. And you can imagine the, the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bears to this great lady, who we know as Umm al Masaib, the mother of sorrows. As difficult as this is now, sister, I now want you to imagine that you are standing on the plains of Karbala. Now the year is 61 after Hijra and the day is the 10th of Muharram. Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, she is lost. Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, years earlier, she saw the poison rip through his body and she saw the men shoot arrows towards his janazah and stop him from being buried next to his grandfather. She has lost Abul Fadl al-Abbas, the brother who shielded her, whose griya protected her. His body is lying by the Fur'at with no hands, with no one to look after him. And now, Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Alayhi salam, Sayyid al-Shuhada. He is making his way to the battlefield and he turns to Sayyid Zainab alayhi salam and says, Oh sister, bring me my horse. I want you to imagine that you are the one holding the horse of Imam al Hussein, and Sayyid Zainab comes up to you and says, Please give me the reins of this horse so I may take it to Abba Abdullah. <laughs> yeah, <I'll say> <sighs> How would you feel? How would you feel in that moment if she had said that to you? Um, I think I would be completely devastated. I would have no words, actually I would have no words at all. Um, I, I really don't know how she could deal with that because I would stand there frozen. I, um, I don't know, I think I, I think I would really just hug her and comfort her. Because I, I, um, if I was in her situation, I would never be able to even say a word because, because that's just so hard and painful. So maybe I, I think I, I would just hug her because I would have no words. What a situation to be in when you think of the fact that Sayyid Zainab alayhi salam is asking you to do something. Surely you would rush to do it straight away, yet in this situation you think, I don't want to give this horse to her because you know that horse will take Imam al Hussein to his death. Now I want you to imagine that you are standing on the streets of Sham and everyone around you is joyous. They are celebrating as if it is a day of Eid. Yet you can see the caravan of the Ahl al-Bayt walking down those streets, captive and in chains, riding on camels and horses with no saddles. You see Sayyid Zainab salam, the light of the eyes of Imam Ali alayhi salam, with no veil to cover her face and all these strange men looking at her. You see the men slap the cheeks of Sayyid Zainab. You see the whips of shimmer on the caravan. You see the cruelty and the jeering of these crowds towards this blessed family. If you were standing in that crowd and you saw this, what do you think you would do? Um, I, th 
it was possible, I would want to go and defend them. I would stand up for them. I would tell them everything they're doing wrong. I would um, stand up for Sayyidah Zainab and I would tell them, how can you do this to a woman? How? Someone that comes from, from such an honored family. She's the daughter of Fatima to Zahra and Imam Ali. And her grandfather is the, prof, uh, is the prophet of Islam. Um, I really, I, I just, I would try to defend her. I would bring all the courage I have in me and just try to stand up for them and for the children as well. And I think I would also tell um, Sayyidah Zainab to stay strong for the children as well and tell her and remind her about um, what God has written in the Quran about patience and that he really has given this fight for his uh, strongest warriors. I would keep reminding her that because I want her to stay strong for them and for everyone to show that yes, she's a woman She's a woman and yeah, she's lost everyone. She's lost her mother, her father, her grandfather, her brothers, but she still has this patient in, patience in her, which shows everyone else that, you know, when you're going through things, just stay with, with Allah and know that Allah has something good for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Isn't it strange that Yazid on that day rejoiced at the death of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam because he thought that he had killed the voice of justice from Ahl al Bayt? And yet, Imam Ali alayhi salam had left that daughter Zainab behind. Zainab, who was the essence of Haydar, the essence of that bravery and patience and dedication that we know and love today. As hard as it is to narrate and reflect on the sufferings of Our Lady, Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, one thing we, all, we must always remember is that one day these crimes will be avenged for by the Imam of our time, the Yusuf of Zahra, Imam al-Mahdi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten his reappearance on the earth. Now all of us want to be companions of Imam Mahdi. We want to bring joy to his heart. We want him to be pleased with us. What qualities that you have seen in Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam would you hope to display to our, to our Imam, Imam Zaman. Um, Sayyidah Zainab really cared about her modesty. So I think I would really, um, I really would uh, secure my modesty. Uh, she also, she was really, really strong when it came to uh, reading Quran, praying, so praying on time, reading every single day, uh, that's something I would do. Um, also her patience is something very significant. Whenever something happens to me, I will always remember her. I remember God and know that the reason, I, will, I would actually try to be very happy about it because I know that God didn't just give me this so j just so I can go through it no it's because I I'm gonna learn through it and experience and grow to become a better person out of it that's one thing I would also do mm -hmm. I thank you so much sister for agreeing to be with me on imagine today and I thank you for your honest, your and mature way of thinking and for expressing your love of our great lady. 
And I pray that Sayyidah Zainab al-Kubra is pleased with your efforts and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to guide you to be the best Muslimah that you can be. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all firm and steadfast on this blessed path of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim wa a path that we don't deserve to be on and yet by his grace we have this in the palm of our hands. And may he hasten the reappearance of our Lord and Master Sahib Zaman. May he remove this grief of occultation from this community. And may he bring justice to this world and avenge those horrific incidents of Karbala and Sham. <laughs> Oh